Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2CTM. Um, I've got a few business trips coming up the next couple of weeks, so I won't have a huge amount of time to do stuff, but I thought I'd just put up a quick video just to have a bit of a chat about what I'm currently thinking for the, the RF power, power amplifier. I, I mentioned earlier on that I was looking at uh, potentially using a, a CB-style transistor for the, uh, the RF power amp. But a comment was made in a uh, one of the earlier videos, it might have been the last one actually, that there was a desire in one individual's case to use uh, commonly available parts. Um, and I can sort of understand that, and that's something which I do do, um, as I've mentioned before, with the likes of the 2N3904, or 3906 as well, depending on its um, PNP or NPN. In this particular case, uh, I'm going to use throughout uh, 2N uh, uh, 2219As, sorry, a bit tongue-tied there. Uh, that's the device I'm going to use um, throughout this device, uh, this amplifier here. This is based very much on the JBOT. Um, it is not 100% um, in line with that. Um, I can't call it the JBOT because the um, the data that was released with that amplifier was pretty clear that it had to be unchanged and to include the text. So um, let's just say it's inspired on the JBOT. Uh, JBOT that is, um, but I've, I've made some changes to biasing some of the feedback and the like, but um, but that's the approach anyway. Uh, I am going to use the same quiescent conditions as in that particular amplifier, so for the first stage 50 milliamps quiescent current, uh, for the second stage 100 milliamps, and on the third stage there, uh, looking at that half a volt, which would be 100 milliamps also, uh, for those four devices, um, of which um, two pairs in parallel. So anyway, that's what I'm looking at here. So for the first stage, uh, in terms of working out our conditions there, before I go any further, the, the beta DC for, and I'm going to work on around 100 milliamps, um, is 150 for the geometric mean between the high and the low. So I'll need that for the calculations later on. Um, I will say too, I've mentioned it before, um, I have no issues using um, existing circuits uh, in, in my radios but, but there's a bit of an internal criteria that I need to be, at least be able to sort of fully understand what's going on. And probably more importantly, if I can, is to actually reverse engineer how values were determined. Um, if I can do that, then I have absolutely no problems at all. But just blindly copying it, I, I, just, you know, I, I just don't want to do that. Anyway, so having said all that, uh, quiescent current flowing through this device, like I say, 50 milliamps, going to set the emitter voltage at 1 volt. So we can do our, our straight at ohms law here. One volt divided by 50 milliamps is 20 ohms. So nearest standard value would be 22. Um, the determination of R1 and R2, uh, like RE, is, is what we've seen several times before. Our base voltage will be one, so again, it'll be 0.7 volts above our emitter. In other words, 1.7. So once we have our 1.7 volts, we can then work out what um, that value would be noting that we want to have passing through at least that device there 10 times the base current, which we see there, 10 times our base current, 50 milliamps divided by 150. Uh, comes out at 510 ohms, so a standard value uh, off the bat, which is nice. R1, just looking at that voltage drop across that device, divided by 11 times the current through, because we have now one more coming through the device. Uh, and I have elected to just um, I'm ignoring this layer here, but the current flowing through that 10 ohm resistor uh, at 50 milliamps, I am looking at that little slight voltage drop across there to then determine 12 minus that voltage drop gives us the voltage at this point, which is then uh, being applied across R1, which is try to be depicted here. Comes out at 2672, so I'll use 2.7k um, as the um, standard value. Just want to double check too that I'm not going to exceed. Uh, from this little bit of, a, bit of filtering up here on the VCC line, that 10 ohm resistor. Uh, I'm not going to blow that, or more the point, what power dissipation I need for that. So uh, that's what we're just looking at here. So power equals I squared R. Uh, so 50 milliamps, uh, adding our base current to be, to be a bit more exact. That squared times 10 ohms is 28 milliwatts, which is fine. Um, considering these are a quarter watt resistors, so 250 milliwatts, so we're well within our limitations there. So for the uh, transformer, uh, looking to present to the collector uh, 200 ohms here and 50 ohms into our, our second stage. 
Um, this will be a seven turns trifolo wound, so seven, seven, seven. And then we have here our, on the primary side, two of those windings in series. So which will give us uh, 14 turns here and seven turns there. So 14 over two equals seven. So again, 14 over um, seven equals two more the point, um, which is our turns ratio down here. So our pins transformation is n squared. So that 200 divided by four gives us our 50 ohms uh, being presented into our second stage there. Uh, from a voltage gain point of view, so it's going to be our, our collector uh, impedance divided by our emitter impedance. Uh, we are not bypassing our emitter resistor in any way. So uh, it's going to be 200 ohms uh, on the collector divided by big RE plus little RE. So our, our junction resistance there. As we know, little RE is 26 divided by um, our emitter current in milliamps. So 200 ohms divided by 22 ohms, our big RE plus our little RE, 26 divided by 50, comes out at 8.88 or approximately um, 19 dB on that first stage. Uh, before I forget, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, potentially some kind of switching network here controlled by the Arduino to really chop down the gain of the stage. Um, I, I haven't quite thought about how I'm going to do that or, or if I am going to more the point. But I was just thinking that if I am going to be measuring the standing wave ratio um, on the radio at all times, then I could utilize that to actually protect itself uh, while we're doing transmit. So if the FWR was to go to some excessive value, yeah, pick a number, 10 I suppose, um, then I could look to crank down the output of the whole PA by throttling that first stage there. So just putting some thought into what, if, if that's a good idea or not, but we'll see. I am going to, be, you know, I'm jumping ahead of myself here, put a couple of zeners across that output there so I don't exceed the um, reverse breakdown voltage uh, across the, or the, the breakdown voltage, I should say, between the uh, collector and emitter for that 2T19A. So I am going to put a couple of zeners there. Anyway, so getting back to the first stage, um, like I say, a gain of approximately uh, 19 dB. So for the second stage, I'm uh, going to do a backwards and forwards here. Uh, 100 milliamps flowing through that device. Um, I won't do the maths here because we've, we've done it several times. So 1 volt divided by 100 milliamps gives us 10 ohms. So um, RE there will be a, a 10 ohm resistor. Um, R2 there, so 1.7 volts divided by 10 times the base current will come out at 255 ohms, so we'll use 270 ohms. Um, I'll throw all of this up on the blog, so uh, all of the numbers are here, so I'll just talk to it, um, and then we'll, like I say, it's all up on the blog. Um, R1, um, same scenario, exactly the same process that we used on stage one. Uh, that'll come out at uh, 1268, so I'll use a 1.2 K ohm resistor for R1 uh, to get that base voltage set where I need it to be. Uh, power across that 10 ohm resistor, exactly the same process as here, uh, and that comes out to be 115 milliwatts because of the um, higher current here. Uh, so it's basically half of our available power being a, a quarter watt resistor, so um, that should be fine there. So, just getting back to what I mentioned before, um, this particular amp here looking at 50 ohms on the input and 200 ohms on the collector. So based on that, I can use the same uh, calculations that I used back in the IF amps to determine the value of RF. So we are going to put, provide some feedback on the collector circuit, as well as some emitter gen degeneration here through R little e. So those two values there, um, like I say, using the same formulas, and I'm going to set that for uh, 12 dB. So for 12 dB of gain, it comes out an RE, a little R little e that is, of 15 ohms, and then the collector feedback circuit, uh, 560 ohms. Um, if I was used to use, if I was to use 18 ohms and 430, it would come out at 10 dB. So I've sort of just put that in reserve there, uh, depending on how much gain we have overall and uh, stability-wise for the overall lamp. So T2, that um, transformer here, uh, that is going to be uh, 10 turns on the primary, and the secondary is going to be uh, 3 turns uh, by filer. 
uh, again in, in series so that will turn out to be uh, 10 over 6 um, for the impedance um, transformation there for that okay so that takes us to the uh, the third stage the final stage here which um, is two sets of uh, to in to do one nine a's again uh, in parallel in a push pull configuration. So because of the the arrangement of our input uh, transformer here, being um, earth or from an AC point of view, earth at the centre, then we get opposing voltages being uh, generated here, and then being reconstructed on our um, our output transformer, which we'll come to soon. So again, acting in a a push pull configuration. Um, yeah, so. We, uh, we know that uh, we're having roughly half a volt across these 5 ohm resistors. So um, half a volt divided by 5 ohms comes out at 100 uh, milliamps. So we have 100 milliamps of quiescent current flowing through um, these devices uh, with no signal being applied. Um, that bias in current, because a transistor is a, a current uh, controlled device as opposed to a FET which is voltage, uh, that current is being set through this arrangement here. So there's value R and um, a, 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 um, a diode there, which I'll use a 1N4001 for that one. I haven't written that down. So by var varying R, we can set how much current is actually passing through um, that particular circuit from a biasing point of view. Um, so that's, at the moment, it's going to be notionally set at uh, 470 ohms. Um, but like I say, uh, we'll, we'll tweak that one um, as needed. To, to give us our desired um, quiescent current. So, on the primary, we've spoken about the primary transistors, uh, transformer that is. On the secondary, we have on the uh, primary five terms of bifiler, um, and on the secondary will be ten turns. So those five turns, five, uh, say again, yeah, five turns on each, uh, will be having the 25 ohms from uh, both sides, uh, and where did that 25 ohms come from? Well, we're going to try and get out of each side uh, roughly um, 3 watts. So we know that VCC minus VE all squared divided by 2 times the power out will give us um, the value of resistance that we need to have hanging off uh, the collector circuit in order to generate that much power. So if we use those values there, we can say 12 minus that half a volt, which we talked about before, sitting on the emitter, squared divided by 2 times, and we'll just work on 3 watts to give us our, um, uh, which would be 6 ideally total, but with inefficiencies will bring us hopefully back to, excuse me, <coughs> back to our, our desired um, 5 watts. That comes out at 22 ohms, and we'll, so um, that's pretty close to 25 ohms. So we have on these two um, uh, uh, primary uh, cores here, or, or windings, 25 ohms on each, so 25 plus 25 equals 50. So that's why the turns ratio on the second one is also 10 turns, because we'll have a 50 ohm load, ultimately with the antenna system. So that's the uh, configuration for that. Uh, the RFC up here, uh, I'll just use a... Um, a uh, a, um, an FT37-43 and I'll just have uh, 10 turns on that one in terms of the in terms of the cores I think I'll have for the first stage uh, probably this size here which is a, uh, a BN43-302 uh, if I recall and then a uh, for the stage 2 a slightly larger one there which is the uh, the BN uh, what's that one? It's a, it should be a 202 if I recall, so a slightly larger one. Uh, on the, the final itself, I um, haven't quite thought what I'm going to do with that one, um, with, this, with, the, with the power of this one, so it may be a, uh, a slightly larger one again. We'll play that one by ear. And in terms of actually mounting this, uh, I'm going to use a, a piece of copper board, and I'm probably going to do it um, ugly style, as well, as tidy as I can make it. Um, I don't want to use strip board with uh, the reasonably high power. I just want to um, reduce any problems with uh, any in-track capacitance and the like. So I am going to mount it on this. Why, why on this piece of board? Um, 
I'm going to have a bit of a, um, a job trying to squeeze everything into the available space. So I am going to have in the radio at least a couple of these, um, we'll call them ribs, uh, portions sticking up and then we'll have mounted on either side will be IF amplifiers and filters and, and whatever we need uh, in an effort to, to squeeze it all in. So probably on this side here closest to our output will be the power amplifier. So I will dedicate um, as much as I can of this board, potentially might not necessarily take it all up, but if I start at this end and, and not have things too close, um, I'll, but like I say, I'll, I'll dedicate at least one side, if I can make it less than that, that's great, uh, to the power amplifier. And really that's about it, so um, like I say, this was just a bit of a, uh, an update on what the current thinking is in regards to the uh, power amplifier. We'll just have to see how it turns out in terms of available power coming in in order to get that approximate 5 watts coming out. Uh, potentially I need to add another small stage of amplification coming out of the SBL1, the, um, that, um, that last mixer where it gets mixed up to our desired transmit frequency. There may be a need just to add a small amount of amplification there uh, before going to here, but it'll be a bit of a wait and see. I'll build this first and then I can um, put on the SIGGEN uh, work out how much power needs to go in and then uh, basically go from there. And that's about it. So sorry for the uh, for talking for, for a bit too long, but uh, that's the current thinking and hopefully it'll go quite well. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, 73 all and I will catch up with you uh, in a couple of weeks. Cheers all.